In 1984, Apple unleashed the Macintosh, a compact all-in-one computer with a sleek design and a revolutionary graphical user interface. Let's see how it changed the world of personal computing. Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to walk you through my process of making a motion graphic piece like Vox. We're going to inspect a couple of their videos to get an idea of their styles. Then we're going to move on to create some assets. And finally, we're going to animate them in After Effects. It's going to be a big one. So grab a cup of tea and let's begin. Before jumping into After Effects, let's see some actual Vox videos to identify their style. If you watch closely at their videos, especially their graphic parts, you're gonna catch up on a few things. The first thing is the background. It's a very subtle background with just few specks of dirt. Again, very subtle. The next thing is their use of colors. Very subtle and muted ones. They also use a lot of grids and line as a framing device for their objects. When it comes to photos, they use a lot of old pictures with halftone pattern, giving it a more magazine-like cutout feel. So these are few things that I picked up. Again, Vox's style guide is quite big, so it's really hard to put everything into one single video. So take this as an overall generalization of their style. I probably need to make more videos on this topic to explain everything. So make sure you're subscribed. With this knowledge, I wrote a script and by script, I mean just some few generic lines about the first Macintosh computer. The reason I wrote this so we can have a guide to steer our animation. And in this video, I did promise you guys a full process. So there we go. So armed with the script, I recorded a voiceover and we're gonna be using it throughout our animation. Now with that said, let's move on to the assets and see how they were made. For the background, I made this subtle grungy texture and the grunge is kept at very minimal. It's really subtle. I drew two lines and as you can see, they're not clean and smooth. There's a little bit of grungy look to them to give it a more hand-drawn feel. The next thing is the color palette, which I picked up during the research part. Now for the pictures. I basically found some pictures over the internet and treated them using Photoshop. For the first one, I got rid of the background, then went to filter, pixelate, color halftone. Here, I just changed the max radius to 4 and that's all. For the second shot, I made this Mac from side view, separated all the parts so I can animate them individually, then added the same halftone effect with the max radius set to 8. And that's all I did when it comes to asset management. So in After Effects, I imported all the assets created a new comp and renamed it intro. I imported the BG and fit it to the comp and added a curve effect to bring down the overall brightness and contrast. After this, I imported the line elements and animated a mask over them. Once that was done, I adjusted their speed and time and pre-comped them into their own line comp composition. So I can just drag and drop them anywhere with the built-in animation inside the comp. After this, I dropped the front Mac image and adjusted its scale. I duplicated the line comp and adjusted its scale and position so we can get a nice sort of framing for our center Mac. I created a solid layer to sit behind the Mac sort of like a base. After this, I started animating the map. The idea was it's gonna come up from the bottom of the screen and slide into the right side. I started putting keyframes and adjusted the motion path. At one point I had to add a fill effect to the Mac because I was zoomed in too much and couldn't adjust the motion path because of those dots. Obviously I turned it off when I was done. Once I was happy with the basic animation, I went to the speed graph and adjusted it. So the Mac comes really fast then slows down, then speed up again when it's sliding to the right. After this, I created a shape layer box for the base of the text. I started typing the word and chose a font I liked. I continuously adjusted the base to match the size of the text. For the text animation, I added an opacity operator, turned it all the way down to 0, then animated the range selectors offset from 0 to 100. 
I eased those keyframes and adjusted the speed graph so it comes fast then settles down. After this I parented the shape layer to the text so I adjusted the text position and the base gonna follow along. After this I duplicated the text and the shape layer then changed the text of the second one. Also adjusted the scale of the second base to fit the new text layer. I added a linear wipe to reveal the base of the first text and adjusted its speed to match the text reveal. I copy pasted this linear wipe into the second base. Then I adjusted the timing of these layers to match with the sliding of the Mac. I created a new shape layer and started drawing an arrow with two different strokes. Once done, I added a trim path to both of the strokes and animated them to reveal the arrow. After this, I added a roughen edges to the arrow and modified its border and scale to give it a little bit of roughen look. I also started duplicating the line comp to get a bit more variation on the framing. I also dropped one of the steel line frame at the base of the BG solid to get a bit more grungy look. I added a wiggle expression to the Mac's position to get a bit more animation opposed to the Mac being still all the time. After this I threw in a little bit of turbulent displays to both of the base layers of the text so they are not that smooth and clean. And this is our first comp done. For the second scene I created another new comp with the same dimensions and renamed it middle. I copy pasted the background from the previous comp to this one. I imported all the side Mac assets into this one then created a null and parent all those three layers to this null. Then I adjusted its size and placed the Mac in the center of the comp. After this I created a solid layer as a base like the previous scene but added a grid to it and adjusted its width till I was happy with it. At this point I imported the voiceover and started animating the Mac. It's just a simple position animation of the Mac opening. Once this was done, I animated the null controlling the entire Mac. So when the front part gets slotted out in front, the whole piece go back and maintain its center position. I eased those keyframes and adjusted its graph so it starts fast then slowly settles down. I created a new solid and put a circular mask to it and this is gonna work as a highlighter for the Mac internals. I set the blending mode to classic color dodge. After this I parented it to the Mac controller and shifted it in the timeline when the Mac is opened. I animated its scale to get a nice pop-up effect highlighting the Mac hardware inside. For a pointer I added a shape layer stroke with trim path and animated the end value. Again the same curve treatment as I was using so far and added some roughen edges to get rid of that clean look. After this I added a solid BG behind the Mac and over the grid to get some more interesting look. Also animated its scale property from the corner when the Mac is getting opened. I added those animated line comps and also dispersed some line elements all over the comp to get a more interesting look. I added the same wiggle expression to the null controlling all the elements like before and that's the second scene done. The third scene was the title one and it's the most simple one. I copy pasted the BG and line up the voiceover for the animation. I added the title using the type layer. And then I started adding those still line elements all over the comp to get a nice grid structure. Once I was happy with it, I typed some random Macintosh facts and placed them in the comp, aligning them with the lines. Also lowered down their opacity so they work as a BG elements. After this I brought in the front Mac pick, scaled it down and placed it over the top. I set the blending mode to color burn and turn the opacity down to blend it better with the BG. For the final part I added a shape layer and started drawing a stroke surrounding the Macintosh word. Once I was happy with it, 
I threw in a roughen edges and animated a trim path modifier in the stroke for the animation. I used a grungy image as an alpha mat to add a bit texture to the title and used a curve to make sure it's really subtle. And this is our third scene done. Before assembling the final comp, I made another comp with the same dimensions and added a whole bunch of line all over it. I scattered them all over the comp with different scale and position values. Now this comp will work as a transition comp between the first and the second scene. Once the first scene end and it started moving in the right to the next scene, we are gonna go through this comp. That's the main reason why I created this one. In the final comp, I dragged all the three scenes and the transition comp. Also put the voiceover in to sync up with the animation. After this, I line up the intro comp, transition comp and the middle comp exactly in that order one after another. I added a null object, parent all of them to the null. Now I can animate this null to move in to the next scene. In the first intro comp, I added some Gaussian blur and animated it from a high value to zero so we get more of a stylistic look at the beginning. I also animated the scale of this comp so we can get a zooming in effect while the first scene plays. With a little bit of speed graph adjustment, I mean the usual stuff, we got this. I also adjusted the main null keyframes so we get a quick slide then settles down to the next scene. For the last scene, I wanted to do a jump cut between the middle and the end title comp. I started animating the scale value of the middle comp and adjusted the speed so it starts slow and in the end becomes very big. I also added a blur for the last couple of frames so as it scales up, it gets blurry. When the scale reach its peak in the middle comp, that's the point we are gonna jump cut to the end title comp. But this time the animation is the exact opposite in the end title comp. In this comp it starts blurry and scales down slowly over time to reveal the entire comp. I added some noise to tie everything down together and then on an adjustment layer added the posterized time effect set to 12 to get that low frame rate. I added some basic sound effects and music in this final comp and we are all done and this is the final version. In 1984, Apple unleashed the Macintosh, a compact all-in-one computer with a sleek design and a revolutionary graphical user interface. Let's see how it changed the world of personal computing. I know it's a huge breakdown but I hope this helped you to understand the entire process. If you want a deeper look, you can collect the project file from the link in the description. I will probably make more of these breakdown videos of different channels, so please comment down your suggestions. I hope this video was helpful. As usual, leave a like, share this video and subscribe for more motion graphics content. And I'll be seeing you in the next one. Bye guys.